Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! Hey, hey, everybody, it's Dr. Movie Time, your somewhat favorite show that you like to listen to when you're bored. So if you like little short uh, 15-minute episodes or so, um, this is it. I'm Rick, I'm your host, and I do this show while driving my car, in case you didn't know that. If you're new and listening to the show, it's just a good opportunity for me to spit out some some knowledge (laughs) yeah that's what it is Uh, got one for you today that I kind of skipped back in the day I tried to watch it a few times in my youth and just couldn't get the hang of it but uh, finally checked it out and we are talking about I Madman from 1989 it's a horror thriller and I've always been intrigued about this movie Uh, as far as just the concept, the look. But I just couldn't sit down and get through it for some reason. So I finally did. So let's let's talk about that. Hey, here's something cool that (laughs) maybe I can start doing these. But uh, when you you Google these things, which I'm going to tell you, I, I don't recommend you Google stuff and try to read them while you're driving down the road, even though that's what I'm doing. Don't do as I do, do as I say, right? I think that's how that goes. Uh, I love this thing that says, why to watch, right? So when you Google whatever movie you're talking about, and it says, why to watch, and it says, the performances are fresh and intriguing and as believable as can be in the context, (laughs) right? I, Madman, is a great film noir feel, and it feel to it and it delivers a solid gore and atmosphere yeah okay uh it gets a 5.9 out of 10 on imdb and uh let me get past this car and we will read a synopsis all right here we go turn my brights on uh beautiful bookkeeper virginia fosters a growing interest in the works of a reclusive novelist novelist malcolm brand After much fruitless searching, Virginia finally receives a package containing Brent's recent book, I, Madman, about a deranged doctor spurned by a beautiful woman. But as Virginia uh, devours Brent's latest offering, she begins to have chilling visions of characters from the book and the thin line between fiction and reality grows terrifyingly thin. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's a, that's real wordy. But yeah, that's the gist of this movie. I, I do want to say uh, this movie was made by or directed by uh, Timor uh, Tasix, I think this is his name. The same guy that gave us The Gate in The Gate 2, which is real, real obvious. I didn't know that till just seeing his name here. That, uh, But... There's, there's a creature that's in this movie that I was like, wait a minute. That looks just like the those little creatures from The Gate. And lo and behold, it it pretty much is. Uh, I mean, looks really like it. Except it's more human size, where the other ones are really small, right? So, hey, if you like The Gate, then you've already kind of got something here that you're like, all right, I can dig that. I can dig it, right? Let's talk about our cast, right? Pretty good cast here. We got Jenny Wright um, from Near Dark, right? Uh, let's see, what else was she in? Uh, Near Dark is obviously what we know her from. She was in Out of Bounds. She was in The, the Wildlife, I just recently covered, right? Uh, she has a, for lack of a better term, she looks like a less slutty Madonna. <laughs> If that makes sense. I mean, she's got the features. She's got the haircut. She's a beauty. I mean, she's she's a pretty girl. And uh, But but she just doesn't have that... Um, I don't know. The, 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 the... 
over the top Madonna thing going on. But uh, yeah, I like her. I like the movies that she's in. We got uh, Randall William Cook in this, uh, who plays Mac, uh, Malcolm Brand, which is the the writer of these of these stories and possibly the killer. We don't know. Um, he's been involved with with all these movies too. Kind of a special effects guy. He plays uh, our 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 baddie in this one, right? And uh, also, we've got Clayton Roner in this. Clayton Roner from just one of the guys, uh, April Fool's Day, from the most awesome. G versus E, good versus evil TV series, which is really hard to find good copies of. If anybody knows where I can score a, a good set of that series, uh, let me know because that is such an awesome show. It's such a great concept. I'd love to see that kind of brought back. It just kind of hit in the 90s and just kind of disappeared, but love that series, right? Uh, that's the majority of who to talk about here. Everybody else is just kind of people dressed like cops. Uh, so yeah, this movie starts off. You're you're involved in this story. It looks like the 1930s, maybe the 40s, film noir, like we said earlier in one of the reviews. And uh, what's going on is uh, our main character, uh, Virginia is reading the novel, right? And she gets to this thing where the bellhop or one of the managers of the hotel go and check out uh, this doctor's room for something, finds a case in there. And while reading the story in the book, it reveals that there's a creature in this, in this, uh, it's just a a locker, right? Uh, Just a big box a travel box and you know the the creature jumps out and attacks the the bell guy or the bell hop and that's kind of your set at the beginning you see her react and it's in real time to where she's actually just sitting and reading this in the book right so she's got through this first book she's looking for the second book called i madman and you know things start getting a little crazy because it's almost like she starts seeing this character from the book who is it's kind of a Phantom of the Opera thing, right? He's obsessed with this one girl and he's willing to do anything to to, to capture her heart. <laughs> and uh, he has removed facial features from himself, right? He's cut off his nose, he's removed his lips, he's removed his, his uh, ears. He's just demolishing himself to try to prove his love to this lady in the, in the book, right? Well, as this goes on, like I said, it's, it's almost like the Mike Myers thing. The Michael Myers thing, not Mike Myers. <laughs> uh, that could, that'd be a totally different movie, wouldn't it? But yeah, Michael Myers kind of thing where just she gets glimpses and thinks she sees him. Well, the more this story goes, the more prominent of a character he becomes. And... You know, you, you kind of go through th- th- this phase of this movie where you're trying to say, okay, there's only a handful of people in this movie. It's got to be one of these people, right? But she even does research on the book as it goes on because crap's just getting too real. And it starts looking at, and the book is considered nonfiction. So she tracks down the publisher, who's a guy that lives in New York, I guess, and he's a smut publisher, right? Everything he releases is, is you know, low-grade smut material. She asked him about the guy. She's like, he's like, look, I, I don't know much about him. Apparently, at some point, he just went berserk, and you know, they held him in a, like an asylum, but apparently he broke out, and so you got that kind of backstory. Well, lo and behold, somehow, he's obsessed with Virginia, and you know, it, it, everything that starts that, that's in the book that she reads is starting to happen, right? So the, it kind of flashes to uh, the idea of what happens in the movie Demons, right? Where whatever's happening in the film starts happening in the theater. And 
it's, but this is really based off of this book, and Virginia is the only one that's that's really seeing this stuff. But this guy is literally killing people. Matter of fact, he kills a lady that was in Virginia's uh, theater class, acting school, acting class, and uh, she, uh, the madman, kills her and kills another guy that she's kind of friendly with, and he's trying to, you know go out with her eventually trying to get with Virginia but she's all wrapped up in, in Richard which is uh, Clayton Rohner's character and he's a police officer so she's dating a police officer they've got a pretty serious relationship going on but obviously he doesn't believe what she's saying although she knows everything about every time these murders happen and finally he starts believing her and you know it, it's I'm not sure what I feel about the way this thing kind of wraps up. I'm not going to spoil it too much. Uh, I guess I expected a Scooby-Doo type ending, you know, where it's, I don't know, somebody that worked at the library that she was free. I expected it to be somebody, but I think we're sticking with, nope, it's this crazy guy that escaped the, the insane asylum that wrote these books, and that's fine and dandy. But uh, I'm going to just kind of leave it there. I think this, this movie's got a ton of atmosphere. I think it's pretty clever for the time that it came out. Um, all these ideas are still pretty new at this point. And I think you could take this movie and maybe Bad Dreams and put them back to back and have a pretty decent night of some kind of mind-bending... Um, psychological thrillers here and uh, yeah I mean when when the killer is knocking off these people from her art class or theater class he's cutting off their hair he's you know or scalping them really uh, cutting off the ears cutting off the nose he's he's building these parts and putting it back on his own face to again you know please her and it finally comes to the point to where, just like in the book, he ends up killing the girl and, and pulling her heart out, cutting it out with a scalpel, and wearing around his neck, uh, you know, on, on a necklace. <laughs> so, obviously, she's trying to avoid that, and she knows where all this is going to happen at because the book starts giving these clues. And so you kind of have a big face-off here, a <laughs> literally face-off. And... Um, uh, like I said, I'm going to kind of leave it there because that kind of leads up to the nuts and bolts of how this thing is going to fin finish out. But I think there's a lot of clever stuff in this. I do like the look of it. Uh, another thing I like is it's kind of like when we become horror fans. And because she'll be reading the book and then something will happen that'll totally freak her out and she just shuts the book, right? Early on as horror fans, we we want to be scared, but not a lot, right? But there's that, that level that we're just not ready for, right? So you end up stopping the movie or closing your eyes. You know, it's, it's that thing, right? I think it does a good job of taking you to those places from her mindset. And... Uh, I think that plays really well. I, I think the only thing that bothers me about this movie, really, is I think some of the music is cheaply done. I, I think they kind of, you know, they kind of cut back on, on spending money on a really good score for this. Because some of it, you can tell, is just kind of a synthesizer doing string backgrounds. And it sounds a little cheap. And I think that kind of hurts it in a way. Uh, just in places. Not a lot. But uh, overall, I, I, you know, I'm glad that I got to finally sit and figure this movie out. And I still say it's it's a pretty decent flick. I think you need to check it out. And just like always, it's on Tubi. And it's for free. And I'm going to give this movie a 3 out of 5. I think it's just kind of good middle of the road. I liked it, right? 
It's got some interesting concepts. It's got some interesting ideas that uh, that really happen in this. So give this one a shot if that sounds like anything you're interested in. Uh, don't expect um, over-the-top gore. It, it's got some things in it, but a lot of it is either done off-camera or, you know, so I, I, I wouldn't call this really a, a splatter fest by any means. But it's just got this nice flavor of, of psychological thriller where you can't tell what's really happening or if it's all in her head. So it's got kind of that aspect to it. All right, folks, that's it for this one. If you have recommendations, if you like this movie, if you want to tell me about this movie, if you like it or hate it, let me know. Be glad to hear from you. All right, folks, till next time, snoochie boochies.